Ever Educating, and this channel is teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for new college instructors. In today's video, I'm showing you how to create a branching scenario activity using Google Slides. So I'm not going to give you ideas for how to use this, it's more how to create it. Let's go ahead and see how to create a branching activity using Google Slides. I've gone ahead and created a couple examples just so we're not starting like from scratch because that can take us quite a while but I will make sure to show you the step-by-steps of cre creating a branching scenario. So in this case, I've just opened up a Google Slides document. And as you can see, I have a few slides here. And so of course, the first slide would be, you know, the, the title or cover of the activity. But how it works is, let's say you have this second slide here, which is the first question. So this is an example of a review where the questions get harder if you get them right and they get easier if you get them wrong. So in this case, you have two plus two and then you have the four answers. Now the four answers are just written in a regular text box, nothing fancy about them. And the question is in the title element of the slide. And so what's done here is that once you have all the answers written, you go ahead and link the answers to the slide that will correspond to them. So I have here a question, right? Two plus two. And then if they get that wrong, they get an easier question, one plus zero. And if they get it right, they'll get a harder question and that's three plus seven. And so in this case, for example, you have two plus two, right? So the answer here is four. And so in this case, three, eight, and six are linked to, to slide three, the easier question, because those are all wrong answers. Whereas four is linked to slide four, which is if you get it right, then it's a harder question. Same with here. So you have this question here. If they got the answer wrong, so if they put zero, 10, or negative one, they get an easier question. So that's slide five. But if they get it right, if they click one, then they get a harder question, and that's slide six. So to show you how this works, we go ahead and let's do the slideshow. So you have two plus two, what's the answer? Well, let's say they don't know, so they guess three. Now it takes them to one plus zero. Maybe get that one right, they click one, and now they get a harder question, right? Versus, go back to the beginning again, and they, two plus two, they get it right. Oh, that's four they went straight to a harder question, three plus seven. Okay, so that's how it works. Now, how do you actually curate the links? So here we have one that it's not linked yet. So you have three plus seven. All right, let's say they are going to get it wrong. Then they're gonna be going to an easier question. Now I haven't created that question yet, but for now I'll just tie it to the easier question of the first um, path where if they had gotten two plus two wrong, and then they also got one plus zero wrong, it gets them to this slide. Well, we're gonna do that for now just because I didn't wanna create dozens of slides to show you how this works. So you go ahead and highlight 37 and you click the insert link and you say, okay, I want it to go to slide five. And there you go. And then you say, okay, 11, go ahead and link that as well. And that is also wrong. So that's also slide five four, also wrong, and then 10. And so here's a shortcut. If you do on a Mac, Command K, it opens up the linking as well. So this one is correct. So in this case, they'll go to the harder question, which is slide six. And so now all the answers are linked. And so when they click it, they'll go to the slide, depending on if the answer is right or wrong. So that's how you create a branching scenario. You just go ahead and you want to keep yourself organized, of course. So I recommend when you are drafting this scenario, I do think you should create a little key for yourself. And so for example, you could have here and you can go ahead and insert a text box up here that says, you know, it's Q1, right? But then in this case, you can have, okay, so this is if they got the first one wrong, they get an easier question. So then maybe you could have here, this is Q2, but now do some color coding. So for 
the path of easier questions, right, is going to be, let's say, yellow. And then if they had gotten 2 plus 2 right, they would have ended up at 3 plus 7. So this is also Q2, but in this case, it's the harder path. Okay. And so you can kind of organize them as you go like, okay, so if they got the first one, right, it ends up on this slide. So this is Q2. And if they get this one, right, they'll end up on this slide. So this is Q3 of the harder path. And then if they get this one, right, just like you, maybe you build all of the harder, 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 harder ones first. And so you could have this little key of like, okay, this is the path of harder. And then you could have the path of easier. So here's the first question, they got that one wrong. Here's question two, if they get it wrong. Get it wrong again, here's question three. So you can kind of have a sense of, okay, if they were to get all the answers right, here's what the path looks like. If they were to get to all the questions wrong, here's what it looks like. And then from there, you can figure out, obviously you're gonna have to, you know, if, if they get the question wrong, where are they going, right? So maybe they got the first two right, but the third one wrong. Then in that case, now it gets more complicated as far as the numbers of the question goes. But I do think having at least a sense of like the path of all of them right and the path of all of them wrong could be helpful. And you can just kind of pick and choose, well, what questions do they go to if they get it right, uh, if they get it wrong, right? So maybe if, you know, they had the first question, they get it right. And so they end up at the second question in this path of harder and harder. But if they get this one wrong, okay, does that mean they go to Q2 of the easier path? Or do they go maybe to Q3 of the easier path, right? Um, so you want to kind of give a sense of how you want to create a sequence when doing this. So potentially you don't need this legend. Maybe that's confusing to you. But I think it could be helpful just to get a sense of like, okay, like this is the path of harder. This is the path of easier. Now, let's do another example. So that one was things getting harder or things getting easier. But maybe you just want to create an activity that's kind of fun for your students to practice concepts. And so in this case, we have a little scenario, a little like choose your own adventure kind of game, but based off of concepts for their course. So it's called Finding Home here. And so you have a little narrative on the left and then the question on the right. So Finding Home. Little Red Riding Hood has gotten lost at her new school. So many classrooms and hallways, she doesn't know how to get to the bus that will take her home. Luckily, this isn't the first time a new student has gotten lost. To help with this scenario, a few teachers have left clues on the bulletin boards about how to get to different places. Of course, they couldn't resist teaching lessons along the way. Let's help Red find her way home. And so you have the first clue. The wolf in a fairy tale walks on two legs, speaks English, and knows how to ride a bike. These actions means blank is taking place. And then you have four terms, literary analysis terms. And so the answer here is anthropomorphism. So giving an animal human-like characteristics. And so if they get it right, if they click anthropomorphism, they get closer to finding the bus stop. They end up here. She's going the right way. Woo, Red recognizes this hallway from the tour she had earlier in the week. She feels better now that she knows she's going in the right direction. Oh look, another clue was on the teacher of the month board. And so you have the new clue. Free as a bird is an example of, again, you have four answers. Okay, so in this case, it's not like questions getting harder or easier. It's more just practicing knowing certain ter terminology in order to get to the end point, the bus on the way home. Now, if she answered the wrong question, she, uh, the, the, she used the wrong answer when she was answering the question. Then she'll get here. Where is she? Oh no, Red has turned the corner and into a new hallway that she's never seen before. She must have made a wrong turn. Well, at least there's a new clue on the softball sign-up sheet. Okay, and so we have which word is spelled correctly. And so you have the options here. Obviously, you want to make sure that you get rid of the red wavy line so they're not aware that this is the wrong one, right? So you can just click ignore here so that this misspelling is ignored. And so again, you link them. And so in this case, again, you want to make sure you plan the path accordingly. So you might have, okay, well, you have the first one and when they got it right, they ended up closer to the bus stop. So in this case, if they get this one right, 
So they had gotten the first question wrong. They ended up here. If they get it right, then maybe they end up, oh, she's going the right way, right? She's, they end up on this one, okay? So you can have the path of like, okay, these questions mean she's going on the right way. And let's say maybe it's four different slides. If they got them all right, she ends up at the bus stop. But if they get some of them wrong, here are some additional steps she must take on her journey because the person got the answers wrong. Okay, so I recommend potentially outlining your branching scenario before you even start creating the slides, right? So maybe just have a little Google sheet that you open up and like, okay, here is the storyline that I've created and here's what happens if you get it right or if you get it wrong, okay? Um, there are free digital mapping tools that are available online. I've talked about digital mapping before in other videos I'll link below, but this is how branching scenarios work. Right, so if I go ahead and click slideshow here, just to show you, here's the first, let's say, first slide of the scenario here. And so they get it wrong. They end up turning the wrong way. And if they get it right, they end up in the right direction. So now, if, something to notice is that if the student is like using the arrows, they're gonna end up like completely lost because since the branching scenario is taking place, they're going to different slides, they're skipping around depending on whether or not they're getting the question right or wrong. So you want to emphasize to your students, you know, don't use the arrow keys because you're going to get super confused. It's not the path that you're supposed to be taking. Go ahead and use the order of answering the questions and eventually you'll reach the end of the activity. So you want to make that clear to your students. Don't use the arrows. The whole point is to use the answers only. So in this case, I recommend using the branching scenarios for ungraded activities. So again, it can be an exam review just to help students in preparation for an exam or an activity like this one where they're reviewing important concepts. Of course, this could be in prep for an exam too, but it could also just be like a supplementary activity. Hey, are, do you feel a bit confused about the terminology? Do you wanna make sure you have a strong grasp of it before we do a graded activity that requires you to have knowledge about these terms. Here's an ungraded activity that you can do that is a bit of a fun way to make sure that you're understanding these terms, okay? Because if it is graded, then it becomes more complicated because again, they can just go throughout the whole slides. So in that case, you'll likely wanna have a branching scenario using Google Forms because that can also lead you to okay, if they get this question right, go to this question. If they get it wrong, go to this question. It's a more like functional way of doing branching scenarios for a graded activity. But I find it a bit more, it can be a bit more confusing in my opinion to use Google Forms than using PowerPoints. It can also, it doesn't like, I feel like give you as much design um, flexibility as using the slides do because you can add images here really easily. You can have multiple things happening on the screen. It, it, there can be transitions into the slides. Like it can be a lot more engaging when you have slides versus a Google Form document. But if you do want it to be graded, then I do recommend using Google Forms. So just to show you, you know, I created this kind of example here. So you have a question that you create. And the first thing you want to do is go to settings and make it a quiz. You see, toggle this on. So in that case, you could have an answer key and you can say what the right question, what the right answer is. So the right answer is four and they'll get a point if they get that right. And they say done. So now you know the four is right. But the problem here is, is you can't say, okay, if they get this question right, go to this question, right? You can't do it that way. What you have to do is create sections. So I created this little icon here. I created two sections, right? So here's question two, if they get the answer right, is what this section is, and here's the question. And here, if they get the question wrong, here's the question they will get. So in that case, you can go to the settings and say, go to section based on answer. And you can say, okay, if they go to, if they click three, they go to section three they got it wrong and same with two and eight but if they click four then they go to the question to right section because they got it right so it just means like you're creating a lot of sections 
in order to guide them through the branching scenario. But it is a way to do it graded because it's a quiz, so there's an answer key. So give and take, I personally feel like using this for non-grade activities makes life a lot easier, but it is an option that I wanted to point out if you want to use Google to create a branching scenario. Click like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content. I'll see you next time.